In this important video, we're going to look at how trigonometry can be used to split forces into two perpendicular forces with the same effect, and also how to combine different forces to find a single equivalent force. So, to get going, let's consider a force of size 8 newtons which acts at 32 degrees above the positive x direction as shown in the diagram. We're going to try and split this force into a component acting along the x direction and a component acting along the y direction. And to do that we need to create a right angle triangle which has the 8 newton force as the hypotenuse of the triangle and the sides x and y need to be parallel to the x and y axes. Then using GCSE style trigonometry we can say that capital X divided by 8 is the adjacent divided by the hypotenuse so that is cos 32 which means that x is 8 times cos 32 or 6.784. Similarly y divided by 8 is the opposite side in our triangle divided by the hypotenuse so that is sine 32 which gives me y equals 8 times by sine 32 which is 4.239. We say that 8 cos 32, or 6.784, is the x component of our 8 newton force, and that 8 sine 32 is the y component of our force. If we're regarding the x direction as being horizontal and the y direction as being vertical, then we could say that 8 cos 32 is the horizontal component of the force and that 8 sine 32 is the vertical component of the force. So, we've seen that a force of 8 newtons acting at the origin and making an anticlockwise angle of 32 degrees with the positive x axis can be regarded as having the same effect as a force of 6.784 newtons acting at the origin and along the positive x-axis together with a force of 4.239 newtons acting at the origin and along the positive y-axis. So let's have a look at a new example. The force P in the diagram has magnitude 12 newtons and acts in a direction that makes an angle with the positive x direction of 113 degrees in an anticlockwise direction. We've got to determine the x and the y components of this force P. So our first job is to create a right angle triangle with sides parallel to the x and y axis. So, there we go. Now we can say that the x there is the opposite side in our triangle. So we've got x divided by 12 is sine 23, which tells me that x must equal 12 times by sine 23, which is 4.69 newtons. But notice that the x component here is acting to the left. So that means that we've got the x component is acting in the negative direction. So we say the x component of the force is minus 4.69 newtons. On the other hand, the y component is acting in the positive y direction. So there's no problem about the signs of the of the y component and that can be calculated easily. We've got y divided by 12 is cos 23 so y must be 12 times by cos 23 which is 11.05 newtons. So the y component of the force P has magnitude 11.05 newtons 
in the positive direction. So the force P has the same effect as a force of 4.69 newtons in the negative x direction together with a force of 11.05 newtons acting in the positive y direction. So we can picture that as what is shown in these two diagrams. Now in an M2, we saw how the resultant of a system of forces is the single force that has the same effect as the system of forces. And in an M2, it was found by calculating the sum of the vectors representing the forces. And we can present this now in a slightly different way. So if we've got the forces are given as magnitudes and directions, then we should first of all resolve the forces into their components in two perpendicular directions. We should then find the total component of all the forces in each of the two directions. And the vector form of the resultant force can then be written down. Or the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force can be calculated through a little bit more trigonometry. So let's see this, this routine in practice. So we've got a sledge that's being pulled by two forces over an icy pond as shown in the diagram. So if we first of all consider the force P, we can see that the component in the X direction of the force P is going to be eight, 84 cos 28 in the positive direction. And the component of P in the Y direction is going to be 84 sine 28 in the positive y direction. If we look at the components of the force Q, we can see that the component of the force Q in the x direction is going to be 56 cos 40 in the positive x direction. And the component of Q, uh, Q in the y direction is going to be 56 sine 40. But because it's in the downward direction, because it's in the negative y direction, the y component of Q is going to be minus 56 sine 40. So the x component of the resultant force is simply the total of the x components of the two forces that we've got. So that's 84 cos 28 plus 56 cos 40, which is 117.07. The y component of the resultant force is going to be the total of the y components that we've got. So that is 84 sine 28 add minus 56 sine 40, which gives me 3.44. So at this stage, we can say that the resultant force as a vector is the vector 117.07 newtons in the x direction and 3.44 newtons in the y direction. However, we want this answer as a magnitude and a direction. And to achieve that, we need to look at the diagram saying what we've got. So we know we've got an X component of 117.07. We've got a Y component of 3.44 Newtons. So the resultant force is the hypotenuse on a right angle triangle whose x side is 117.07 and whose y side is 3.44. So Pythagoras now tells me that r must be the square root of 117.07 squared plus 3.44 squared. 
which comes out to be 117.1 newtons. To find the direction of the resultant force, we need to find the angle theta. And we can use some simple trigonometry for doing that. We can say that tan theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So that's 3.44 divided by 117.07. And that gives me theta equals 1.7 degrees. So the system of forces acting on the sledge is equivalent to a single force of size 117.1 newtons acting at an angle of 1.7 degrees um, in an anti-clockwise direction from the positive x direction. Now before we finish this video I'd just like you to pause the video and have a work through the questions here. So first of all you've got to find the x and y components of each of the three forces shown in the top part of the slide and then on the bottom part of the slide you've got to find the resultant force of the system of three forces shown in the diagram at the bottom of the page. In the next video we'll be looking at some more work on using finding the components of forces using trigonometry.